Welcome to the heart. I'm so glad that you guys are here this morning. You picked a great Sunday uh, to be at church. And you made it. You made it. You didn't think you were going to make it, and you made it. So just do one of these real quick. Just everybody do one. You made it. Good job. You can pat your neighbors back if you want to. My name is Dominic. I'm the leader here uh, at the heart. And um, if it's your first or second time here, I want to share with you that this community is, I- it's more than uh, just a church. We, we, we gather on Sundays and we probably offer some of the things that you might expect a church to, uh, to offer. But what's important to us here at the heart is not that we're able to have church on Sundays. What's important to us at the heart is that we're able to uh, be there for each other at all times, not just on Sundays for an hour. Right, that we're we're able to be there for each other, to get into each other's messes, to get into each other's lives, and to support each other each and every day, and that is the heartbeat of what we are doing here uh, at the heart. In fact, real quick, um, when my wife and I were trying to think of a name for the church, what we're going to call it, um, a phrase that we kept saying that we kept coming back to was, "Well, the, the heart of what we wanted to what we want to do is blank." Right, the the heart of what we're trying to say is this, and so we settled on. Well, we're so concerned on what's coming from the heart that let's call it the heart. And um, we, uh, the way we do things here at, at the heart uh, when it comes to our messages, at least on a Sunday, is we, we work through a message series. So it'll be about four, five, six weeks, and we'll uh, normally take a, a topic or a concept that we want to focus on um, over that period of time, and we'll dig through the scriptures and see what God has to say about about some of these uh, concepts and kind of how we can apply those into our into our lives, how we can take what we're what we're learning here on a Sunday out into the real world, right? Because in here on a Sunday, everybody feels great, everybody looks great. You guys look fantastic. You smell your best. You look your best. And then you know, on Monday morning, you remember that you you know you hate your job or you can't stand your boss or you're not appreciated or. You know, you remember that all these other things that are going on in your life. So it's important that what we do, what we learn, what we talk about, that we carry that into our real life. A couple of weeks ago, we uh, we had a message, and in in one of the things we said was, it's not about knowing more about God. It's about knowing God more. So on Sundays, we don't want to just know more about God. We want to know God. What can we learn from God and with God, not just about God? So if you have your your Bibles, um, you can uh, get those out. Even if you have your digital Bible, you can always go to YouVersion. Um, YouVersion is an app that you can download on uh, on your any one of your any one of your phones. And uh, we have a little event in YouVersion where you can follow along with the scriptures that we're reading and has some extra reference scriptures for you to dig a little bit deeper. Has some questions to answer and it has some uh, some more information on there, so you can always check that out. Um, I do want to say something special that we have coming up. We absolutely love one of the biggest things we celebrate at the heart is baptism and we, yeah we're doing baptism on august the 12th uh we do it in the san marcus river um and it's a huge party we invite everyone out so we have people who are going to get baptized and they'll bring their family and friends but then we also invite everyone in our community to come out and celebrate this new life this fresh life so we have a few people that have signed up already and i want to encourage you that if you have um recently made a decision to be a follower of Jesus, or maybe you made a decision to be a follower of Jesus long ago and you never uh, performed, or not performed, hey, (laughs) you never um, got water baptized, and I want to encourage you to do it. Now, it's not one of those things where you you need to do it, where, you know, you're going to get to heaven, they're going to be like, ooh, no water baptism on the checklist here. Uh, There's, you know, baptismal over there, why don't you go take care of it. It's simply to show it's an outward expression of a spiritual change that has already happened. And what you're doing when you're water baptized is you're you're declaring to your family and friends and all of us and really everyone else that's in the river drinking beer and everything else, you're declaring to all of them as well that you have made a decision to follow Jesus and you want the world to know. 
So uh, if you if you recently uh, made a decision to follow Jesus or you've just never been water baptized and you want to, I want to encourage you to do that. And you can sign up at uh, the Connect Center before you leave. Our Connect Center team is fantastic, and they would love to be able to answer any questions that you have. And if you have any questions throughout the week, you can always get in touch with us that way, okay? I love talking about baptism, so I wanted to let you guys know that. Now, um, if you have your Bibles out still, I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians. And I'm going to read it out here in, in a second, so hold on there. But we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians. This is a book that was written by Paul. Paul was a, an apostle, a, a man who furthered the church of Jesus. He would plant churches or he would travel, plant a church, make sure there was leadership there, make sure there was a good team there to carry on the message of Jesus. And he would say, good luck, God bless. And a lot of what we have in the Bible, a lot of the books that we have in the Bible were letters that Paul wrote to these churches that he helped start, right? Kind of kind of walking them through what it meant to follow Jesus. Everybody was trying to figure it out. They're a lot like us. We're just trying to figure it out. We're taking it one step at a time. And we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, sorry, here in a second. But what I want to ask you, I want to ask you two questions when it comes to today, all right? So I want you to, to reframe your mind. And maybe you walked in here and you were anxious about something, you were frustrated, or you got some things on your mind, you got some things to take care of afterwards, and you got a big week at work, or things are going on in your life. I want you to, just for the next 20 or 25 minutes or so, we're going to ask ourselves two questions. Number one, do you have community in your life? This, this series that we're doing on influence, I want, us to, I want you to look around you. I want you to look around you at the people in your life, the people that you're around. Do you have community? And the second question is, do you value that community? Is that Siri? My Siri is so like, I'll be like, are you serious? She'll be like, what, do you need me? Take it easy. Go bother somebody else, Siri. <laughs> do you have community in your life, and do you value that community? How much do you value that community? That's kind of what I want our frame of mind to be today. Because when this message series uh, being about influence, it's about looking at the people in our life that are influencing us and also looking at the people in our life that we have influence with. That's what a community is, right? It's a community of people who are figuring things out, influencing each other. In fact, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Jules, where is Jules? Jules is over here. A friend of mine, Jules, she was hanging out with some friends the other day. And there were several times that they told her, wow, you sound a lot like Dom. You're sounding a lot like Dom. And that makes sense because we hang out a lot. And we're in the same community. And I probably say some things that sound like some of the other people I hang out with. That's what happens when you're in a community. You start to sound like each other and talk like each other. Not in a creepy way or a weird way. She didn't have a deeper voice. She just had my jokes. Okay, is that just for clarity? We value community. So I want to read this scripture. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm going to read verses 13 through 15. And this is, I believe this is the message version of the Bible. So you might have a different version, and that's okay. I want to encourage you to read different versions, different translations. It can be really helpful in understanding the scripture. Because sometimes you can read a translation, you can read the Bible, and you're like, well, I'm not sure what, what that means. I'm not sure what Jesus was trying, I'm not sure what this author was trying to say. And you can look at a different translation, a different version, and it'll make a little bit more sense to you. So let's go ahead and put that up on the screen. It says, get, a, get along among yourselves. This is Paul talking to one of the churches he helped start. Get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. Our counsel is that you warn the freeloaders to get a move on, to gently encourage the stragglers and reach out to the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each person, attentive to individual needs, and be careful that when you get on each other's nerves, anybody, everybody writing this down? Be careful that when you get on each other's nerves, you don't snap at each other. Look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring it out. I think Paul here is referencing what it means to be in community. And community can be, community can be a broad word. It can mean different things to different people. And that's okay. It should. It should mean different things to different people. I remember when uh, years and years and years ago, my wife and I 
we did uh, we did IVF. We you know we tried to have a baby through IVF in vitro. If you don't know what that is. And we felt so alone in this journey. We felt like everyone else is having babies. Everyone else is getting pregnant. Must be nice, you know. And we felt so alone. And then we went to this like little seminar that they were going to talk about IVF, and we got there early. And as people started to pour in, there was like, you know, 10 couples, 30 couples, 50 couples, 80 couples. We're like, okay, we're not alone. There was a sense of community. We didn't necessarily know everybody, but there is something about not going through something alone that brings comfort, that brings a little bit of peace, a little bit of hope. And it's the same kind of thing in, in every area of our lives. There's community everywhere. In fact, we're sitting, we're sitting down here. Every one of you could have just listened to the podcast, right? You have things to do. You're busy. Something different happens when we gather together. We do it with, we do it at bars. Bars are not designed, you're not like, here's your beer, go to your separate room and drink by yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> In fact, if someone's drinking alone, we call it sad, but if they're drinking with a bunch of other people, we're like, yeah, yeah, that's how you're supposed to do it. You know? You go to a batting cage to practice hitting baseballs, and then you join a baseball team. You don't just do batting cages all the time. You do community. You find a community. I'm really out of real estate with this thing, huh? <laughs> we find community. When it's time to eat for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Some of us might buy like a you know, turkey for one. I was at Target one time and they had an aisle that said meals for one. <laughs> I was like, that's gotta be the saddest aisle. <laughs> like, who's gonna walk down that? Like, I'm just buying meals for one, you know. Who's on the marketing team at Target that said, you know what we should do? We should have a sign <laughs> that says meals for one, and then we'll target those people. No, we crave community. We, we, we need to be around each other. We're designed to be in community with each other. Everything we do, from hanging out on the weekends. Now, there are some weekends where I don't check with anybody what they're doing because I just want to stay home and, you know, catch up on my show or whatever it is. But most of the time, I'm texting around, hey, what's going on? Where are we all going? What are we all doing? I get excited when we're going to do something together because I like to be in community. I like to have people around. And here at the heart, we value community. Community actually is one of our core values here at the heart. Because we know that we're designed to be in community together. And it's not whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, right? Being in community doesn't mean you're yelling all the time or talking all the time or being the loudest in the room. It just means we see the value of being in each other's lives, of being around each other. So I want to look a little bit deeper at what Paul was saying, what Paul was telling us to do here in this scripture in 1 Thessalonians and what it means to be in community. Some steps that we can take out into our life. So one of the first things he says is to encourage. We want to encourage those who are struggling. Look around you. Who in your life? Who at work? Who at school, who in your family, who in your life needs to be, I want to move this just a little bit. Who in your life needs to be encouraged? I don't know. I can't tell you who it is, but I know you can if you take a look around you and see who needs to be encouraged. Paul, then it tells us to reach out, reach out to those who have lost their way, who are feeling lost. These are all actions that we can take in community to have patience. Some of us want to be patient. We wish we could be patient. And then as soon as an opportunity comes up for patience, we forget that we want patience. Paul encourages us to be patient. He says to be attentive to the needs of others. I know that we are very easily attentive to the needs of us, but are we attentive to the needs of others in our life? 
Are we thinking about ourselves first? In a community, we don't always have the luxury to think of ourselves first. We want to be attentive to the needs of others. He tells us to not snap at each other. He tells us to not snap at each other. That when we get on each other's nerves, be careful. Because what's easy to do when you get on each other's nerves is to, and I don't mean, you know, I don't mean to, I don't mean delete your Snapchat account. I just, don't snap at each other. Don't yell at each other. So I, I think there's something comforting, if I can stop here just for a second. I think there's something comforting about Christianity, 2,000 plus years old, right? God, obviously way older than that. And these people who we're reading about in the Bible, they're struggling through the same kind of things we struggle with today. So there's something comforting for me that this isn't a, tw- this isn't a 2018 problem, right? This isn't an America problem. This isn't a Trump problem, even though I like to, you know, we all like to blame him. This is part of the human condition. This is a human problem that we're not attentive, that we forget to encourage, that we snap at each other when we're getting on each other's nerves. And I love this. I love this part of the scripture is look for the best. Look for the best in others. What can happen in your family? What can happen in your, uh, in your circle of friends if you start to look for the best? Because more often than not, what we do is we look for the worst. I knew it. I knew it. I knew you were going to say that. I don't want to say this to my mom or my dad or to my brother or to my wife or my husband. As soon as I say it, they're going to say this. I knew it. I knew they were going to say that. What would it look like if we were to look for the best So I want to read these back to you real quick. Encourage, reach out, patience, be attentive, don't snap, and look for the best. You know what is required to do any of those? What you absolutely have to have for any of those to take place is other people. You need community around you to encourage others. You can't just encourage yourself. You need community around you to be patient. You need community around you to remember not to snap out at others. You need community around you to be able to look for the best. And if you are taking notes, I do want you to write this down. Look for the best in each other. Look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring it out. Leave this up here just for a sec, okay? So if you're taking notes or if you're not, if you're taking notes, look for the best. In fact, if in, in your notes, if you're typing it up, I want you to put look for the best And don't write in each other. Look for the best in my wife, my husband. I'm going to look for the best in my boss. I'm going to look for the best in, you know, that coworker who, like, takes all the credit but never does anything. You know what I'm talking about? You know how they are. I'm going to look for the best in whatever their name is. Cynthia, Cassandra, David, Jeremy. I'm going to look for the best in them. And I'm always going to do my best to bring it out. That's powerful. You put yourself in such a powerful position in your community when you say, I am going to look for the best. I'm not going to wait for them to act their best, right? I'm not going to wait for them to shape up. I'm not going to wait for them to figure it out. I'm going to look for the best. And I'm always going to do my best to bring it out in them. That can be a powerful position. And you can really step into what it means to be in community, to understand the value of community. Because community is not just being around people that can be a community. But I want us to redefine community, right? I want us to understand what real community means, what it means to be in community with others. That we are designed for a community. In fact, if I may, the teachings of Jesus. This is what we call hyperbole, so get ready. The teachings of Jesus can only exist in community. Because a lot of times, maybe you've heard this phrase before, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Right? Anybody heard that phrase before? 
you want to make a decision or enter into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I think there is something missing a little bit there. Because if we talk about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, it's like that, it's like we're, we're all going to go have dinner together. Here's your plate. Now go to your separate rooms and eat. Here's your personal dinner. This is your personal plate. So here's your plate if you could go to, you know, the kid's back room. Here's your plate if you could go eat that uh, in the kitchen. Here's your plate if you can go eat that in the bathroom. <laughs> I think that's what I think that, that's what I picture. Not eating in the bathroom. I mean eating like your own plate in a separate room. That's what I picture when it's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I think what is more what we experience is a shared relationship with Jesus Christ. Here we all are in this room right now in a shared relationship. We are understanding and learning and growing in faith together in a shared relationship. We need Jesus and we need each other. And here's what I mean. The greatest commandment, there are people who are following Jesus. And they're like, Jesus, what, what is the greatest commandment? These are people that already knew the Ten Commandments, you know? Like the ones that God supernaturally chiseled into stone. And in case they forget the Ten Commandments, they say, Jesus, what is the most important commandment? And if, if you're not sure what that is, Jesus tells them. He says you need to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with everything. We're meant to love God with everything, but he doesn't stop there. You know what he says? He says, and love each other as you love yourself. Community is required to follow what Jesus says the greatest commandment is. Because if we have no one around us, if we have no community, and we're just loners, and we're just doing our thing, then there's no way we can be a part of what Jesus is telling us to do, to love others. Not to tolerate others. Not to just stand around others. <laughs> but to love. But to love others from a real place. So the teachings of Jesus, what Jesus tells us to do in loving others and forgiving others, community is required for those things to take place. We need Jesus, we do, because Jesus saves us. Jesus loves us. It's Jesus' sacrifice that has put us in right standing with God the Father. It's Jesus' actions that have made a way for us to be able to receive everything that heaven has to offer. Every hope, every blessing, every grace. That is because of Jesus, so we absolutely need Jesus. But from what we can learn and what Paul is teaching us here in 1 Thessalonians and what we can learn from the stories of Jesus is we need community around us to be able to fulfill the people that God has designed us to be, the people that God wants us to be, the people that Jesus teaches us to be. Jesus himself had community around him. He had 12 guys. He was teaching them, growing with them. And as they hung around Jesus, they started to sound like him. They started to love like him. They started to reach out to people like him. They stopped snapping at people. Right? It's not about being perfect. I think the lie that we're told so many times is Christianity is about being perfect. Okay, so you know Jesus now, so now you should know better. You're not going to mess up anymore. Right? You should know better. That's not what it is. It's about allowing ourselves to make mistakes, but to live in forgiveness, to continue to love each other. I think that's why Paul in 1 Thessalonians, let's put 1 Thessalonians back up here, that first slide. Paul says to gently encourage stragglers and reach out for the exhausted. Because Paul knows that many times what we want to do is if people are straggling, we're like, forget them. They can't keep up. We don't have time for them. We see someone who's exhausted and we say, they're done. They obviously don't want to do it. And Paul says, no, 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 that's not what community is. 
Community is not giving up on the people who are having a hard time. Community encourages. Community reaches out. Community reaches out to people who are exhausted and pulls them up to their feet. Go to the next one. Community says, we're going to be patient with each other. We're going to be attentive to each other's needs. And we're going to be careful when we get on each other's nerves that we're not going to snap at each other. But here's what we're going to do. You know what we're going to do? Somebody asked me, what are we going to do? Somebody asked me. Okay, I'll tell you. I appreciate you asking me, brother. We're going to look for the best. We're going to look for the best in each other. I'm going to look for the best in my wife, Amber. I'm going to look for the best in my son, Corbin. And I'm always going to do my best to bring it out. See what a powerful position that puts me in? Now, I'm not waiting for them to treat me right. Now, I'm not waiting for people to do right by me. Now, I am empowered. I am empowered to bring out the best in you. I am empowered to bring out the best in you, to be patient, to be attentive. That's what happens when we start to value community. At the beginning, I asked you a couple of questions. One of them was, do you have community? And maybe through this, through today, you realize maybe you do have community, but you didn't know it. Maybe your community looks a little little different than mine does or somebody else's. So where do you find your community? A great place to start. And maybe you've already been thinking about this, and, you know, you hear, hear us talking about it on HC News, and maybe you see it on Facebook and Instagram every now and then, and you haven't jumped into it. Our connect groups are an amazing place to find community. They are designed to facilitate community in a real way. Not, well, hey, this is what churches do. They do groups, so we're going to do groups too. Let us know if you want to (laughs) come. No, we believe that what's most important about what we do here at the heart is not what we're doing right now. Because if the spot, this amazing place with this amazing staff, and the staff here is amazing. If they said, Dom, you guys can't meet here anymore. You can't meet at the spot and we had no place to meet on a Sunday, you know what we would still continue to do is meet up in groups, be at each other's home, connecting with each other. Because the most powerful thing about the heart, about this church community, is not where we meet on Sunday. It's not this message. It's not this 30 minutes that you hear me just, you know, pontificate on what I think is important. No, no, no. The most important thing what we do is be there for each other. The most important thing we can do is listen to each other. That's where our faith grows. Jesus talked very little (laughs) about 30-minute messages on a Sunday. But he talks very much about loving each other, about being around each other, about forgiving each other, about being patient with each other. It's almost all he talks about. That's what we can learn when we dig in. There's one more scripture I want to read you, and I'm sorry I didn't tell you earlier. It's Galatians. Galatians 6. Galatians is another letter that Paul wrote. Come on, with Paul, right? Paul stepping into his role, stepping into what God wanted him to do, and we read so much in the New Testament of what Paul wrote as he was working out his faith and helping others work out their faith. Love empowers us to fulfill the law of the anointed one. That's Jesus. As we carry each other's troubles. As we carry each other's troubles. You know what you need around you if you're going to carry someone else's trouble. I'm sure you get it by now, right? You need community. If you have no community, how can you carry anybody else's troubles but your own? But love empowers us. See the empowered position that you're in, the empowered position you can be in? You are
are empowered by love and not the love that you have. Maybe your love isn't strong enough. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you're angry. Maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you're depressed. Jesus' love is our source. Jesus' love sustains us, so even if we don't feel like loving, we don't need to feel like loving because love is bigger than our feelings, and love empowers us to fulfill what Jesus wanted us to do. And that's what's carrying each other's troubles, being there for each other. And that's what community is about, is about being around people who you can carry their troubles because there's going to be a day, there's going to be a week, there's going to be a year where you're going to need people around you that can help you carry your troubles. There is so much value in community for you and for, the, and for those around you. And so for the rest of this message series, for the rest of this week, I want you to keep telling yourself to look around. I want you to look around you. Who in your life needs to be encouraged? Who in your life needs to be attended to? Who in your life needs you to be patient with them? And who can you look for the best in? How can you do your best to bring out the best in them? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what our families will look like if just you started to look for the best in everyone? Even those really passive aggressive people that you live with? What would happen if you looked for the best in them? How would that change the dynamic of the household? You know how your roommates are. You know how your husband is. You know how your wife is. You know how your kids are. No, no, no. What if instead of saying that, we said, I'm going to look for the best. I'm going to look for the best. And I'm going to do my best to bring out the best in them. That could change this city one family at a time. It could change this community one decision at a time. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes just for a second. Close your eyes. Bow your heads. We do this. We close our eyes, not because God shows up when our eyes are closed, right? (laughs) No, we close our eyes so we can focus. And here's what I want you to do. I want to give you an opportunity. I want to empower you today through love, through God's love. I want to empower you to take a step towards fulfilling what Jesus wanted us to do by taking a step towards community. And maybe for you, community means you don't sneak in and out of the heart anymore. Sneak in at 938, bounce with the during, during the last prayer. Maybe for you it means you take that, that, that step and you say, I'm going to join a connect group. I'm going this week. Maybe for you it means that that person that you work with, like I'm going to take a step and I'm going to just one day this week, I'm going to believe the best about them. I'm going to look for the best. It's just taking a step. And I want to ask you, if you're ready to take a step today towards community, I want you to raise your hand on the count of three, okay? And you know I don't. You know what community means. You know what community you need to be a part of. You know what community you've maybe been staying away from. So if you're ready to take that step towards community, I want you to raise your hand on the count of three. Now, I also want to talk to those of you in the room who have never made a decision for Jesus. We talked about that earlier, making a decision for Jesus and getting water baptized and all that. Well, making a decision to follow Jesus simply means that you want to be part of God's family. That you don't want to just be a creation of God, but you want to be a son or a daughter of God. And you want to step into that. And you can take that step today. You can make a decision to follow Jesus, and your life will never be the same. And you can walk out of here a brand new person. That's what happens when we accept Jesus, when we rely on Jesus, and we choose to follow Jesus. See, there's this gap between us and God, and that gap is called sin, and that sin has been eradicated and deleted and defeated by the person of Jesus Christ. So when we choose to follow Jesus and we choose to believe in Jesus, our sin is wiped away, and we are now connected with the Father. We are now ambassadors of heaven, citizens of heaven. So if you want to make that decision today, I want you to raise your hand on the count of three as well. So we're going to do this. Let's do it. One, two, three. If you're ready to make that decision, any of those decisions, whether you're going to take a step towards community or you're making a step to follow Jesus, I want your hand up to be right now. Hand up. Okay, let's put your hands down. We're going to pray. God, we are so grateful for who you are. We are so grateful for the grace that you show us, the grace that you give us. 
We're grateful for the freedom that we have, the empowerment that we have through your love, because of your love, by your love, to step into community, to follow Jesus, to be the people that you have designed us to be, God. God, I pray that you would help us to look for the best in ourselves and that we could bring out the best in us while we're bringing out the best in others. We pray that in Jesus' name. Oh, I love me some hope. Oh, I love me some hope. Oh, I love me some hope. Hey.